quality health care is essential. But in many instances, costly, are you thinking of enjoying standard health care in a short state without being unnecessarily overstressed or overstretched financially? Our ship health insurance scheme is for you. To register, log on to www.oshia.com. My name is Shina Bubaka. I work with Vanguard Newspaper. And today, to the grace of God, the German Ocean State Correspondent Chapel of the Nigerian Journalist. Well, I think after I had an issue with at the school, my school first, Federal University of Technology, Akure. I used to be a science student, actually. So there are issues about cultism in school, people being round up, and unfortunately, without giving fair hearing, we are suspended indefinitely. So I opted that I wanted to study law. And why did I want to study law? I want to study law because I feel I can always give people voice, I can advocate for people, and so I, on my own, decided to go and retake examination to sit for arts. So I went back, sat O level, had my O level again, then wrote jam. I applied to Obafemi Law University then. And being a sports guy, I wanted to take advantage of sport admission. So we went for screening. So at the end of the day, somebody said I should pay, think about 50,000 then to be given love. I just walked away actually. Now, along the line, I think I was in Bini. I was talking to some friends and suddenly I just felt like, what about studying mass communication? Like a journalist, you can give voice to the voiceless. You can always be an advocate for the people without having to be in the courts. There is something where you can without restriction. Because I also get to happen to realize that even when you study law, there are limits to power you have in the court of law. There are rules and stuff. So I went, I wrote O level, like I said, and wrote jump. Later, then jump was not uh, a unified exam. You had the university jump, you have the polytechnic jump. So I wrote the university jump. So the Polytechnic jam, and I was given admission to uh, Federal Polytechnic Bida. I've never been to Bida before. I lived all my life in the north, all the states in the northwest and northeast, but not central apart from Kwara. I've never been to Bida, so I was given admission to Bida. So I went to Bida to study mass communication. So that was my how I ventured into journalism. First of, all, first of all, I was admitted to Federal University of Technology, Akure, where I was studying physics electronics before I had that issue. Then I went back to Federal Polytechnic Peter. And after my ND days, while I was having my um, industrial training for one year at Nigerian Television Authority, um, should go here, I had this encounter with other students that came from other, uni from other schools, particularly university students. And there was a day we were having this practical in the studio. The supervisor then came from Ibado. And he was like, out of all them, you are the best student we have here. He now said something. Uh, <laughs> Chief, if you go back to study, <laughs> if you go back for your HND, you end up being a sub-student to university student. The advice you go back to the university. I was like, OK. So after my IT, I worked briefly with a newspaper, then I felt like, no, I'm not going back for HND. So I went back to write another jump to seek admission for to study law again at Obafemi Law University again. And after the exams, I was given, uh, instead of law, I was given political science. So I went back to a huge study political science. So those are the higher institutions I attended, some by accident, some deliberately. 
Mm, I've been practicing right after my NG days. I think that was 2007. I started to start practice with some small media organization. I think there was a paper then that was defunct now. Um, forgotten the name of Danish paper actually. I think one day I was, because I was also a sports guy, I am involved deeply in volleyball in Ocean State. I'm one of the players for the state. So one day I was walking by around Adjokunle, I saw him and I feel like I can walk in here and walk. So I just walked in and I told him, I want to walk. Like, this story must come, I said yes. So I started with that, part time. After that, I went to Nigerian platform. After Nigerian platform, I went to Ocean Defender. And that stretch over a period of about seven, ten years before I eventually joined Vanguard, where I am presently. Usual, the normal challenges journalists will feel on a daily basis. People not wanting to cooperate when you need vital information. Uh, those in government calling you, uh, you're working for opposition. Those in the position telling you you're working for government or you've been given money not to carry their story. Majorly, people don't really understand how journalism works. That yours is just to go get the story together. You're sending that story somewhere where they have the power to publish or not. So the moment people didn't see their story, they feel like, oh, they've collected money from government. If it is government, they feel like they've collected money from the opposition. That's why those stories are not published. And besides, the problem you have with the police, majorly law enforcement agency, believes they are above the law. You cannot write anything about them. You cannot inform the public about them. So when you do, they feel like, who are you to write certain things? Well, as usual, because of the training you get right from school, that you police will not see you as friends. Security agencies will not see you as friends. Even sometimes, the people you are, discharging social responsibility towards. Sometimes even feel very, very hostile towards you. We've got that from school. So it's not a big deal. We always cope with it on a daily basis. But many times, on many occasions, it is one day, one challenge. One different day, different challenges. But we are coping. I remember having a good day, seriously, because <laughs> good day, actually I can't remember one, that is just the answer, I cannot remember one. I think top of it was, was when I lost my younger sister. I was told my younger sister had an accident in Lagos. In a boat me shop, and that same day, an editor was calling that uh, I need to so stories, so so stories. And at that moment, I think I was actually not myself. I was walking from stadium towards Ayotoro, not really knowing that I was going to Ayotoro. I was to take a bike somewhere, but because I was thinking, could my sister have an accident? Could she have died? Stops. But yet, an editor called and was shouting, "I want that!" Nah, 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 nah. I was like, why did I even venture into this job? Then, the day I was supposed to go pick a uh, corpse, another editor was calling, it was on my neck, why the hospital, the general hospital management in Okorudu were like, we can't release this call because it was during COVID. Someone had an accident on, on a boat and they were relating it to COVID. So we are at the peak where it's, emotions are flying around and another editor was calling and shouting, give me this, give me this. I actually had to do the assignment, but later I had to inform the editor that, hey, okay, it's just for you. I actually lost my sister and I was doing this and I was like, ah, sorry, but thank you for sending the story. So, stuff like that. Risk every day, particularly when you are covering protests. Police don't really want to differentiate between journalists and protesters. For them, you're all the same. And sometimes, particularly with the incident of Tobadidiji that was shot right under the bridge there, that day the police came around with intent to kill. 
because a police team that was coming that never had a security surveillance of who and who were involved in that protest, the extent to which that protest is or was going on, and the fact that they alighted from a corope where they cannot see what is going on and they start shooting sporadically. That was the biggest risk we ever faced because I remember there was a girl, a call member that was serving with us then, wanting to fly across a bullet. So I had to draw her back. Then we started running. Unfortunately, Toba was hit and the rest of us, thank God he's alive. And we're also safe and kind. But that was the best, the closest encounter so far. most memorable day as a journalist. Okay, let me say the day I was given an award. As, okay, I went somewhere to deliver a paper. And that day, there are professors, academics, that want to deliver a paper on the risks journalists face on a daily basis, or what you go through to discharge our duty. And I was invited to speak as a practitioner. And then, Rather than calling the academics to speak first, I was called to speak first. And after I delivered about 45 minutes presentation, a professor was like, come, 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 come. There is nothing for us to talk about. You have done the job of a journalist, practicing journalist. You've done the job of an academics. Everything, you put it all straight for us. So whatever we are doing here is just an addendum. And without pre-planning, the school brought a plaque and presented to me as an award. That was my memory with you. Do you think at the point you invited Yes, there is always bias. The classroom doctrine that a journalist stay away from the story is not practice right there on the field. There is always bias. Because, for instance, when you are writing and you feel that the people deserve certain rights, that is a bias. So on a daily basis, there has always been a bias, but the bias is always on the side of the people. Never. It is absolutely impossible. Because where you work, doing that could cost you your job. So, for, for me, it is not how fast, it is how accurate. Is it real? Is it genuine? If I had a bit of doubt, I rather don't write the story, you drop it, than going ahead with it. I think I create, I do create free time for myself. And those free times are usually odd time. There are times when I close from work seven, eight, I will have to do other side also by 8, 9, 10. And 10, 11, I feel like, ah, I am tired. So let me call a friend. I do call friends. Sometimes I call Toba Adidiji. Sometimes I call Sholai Shola. Uh, let's hang out. So we hang out from 11, 12, 1. Then I go home. I think 11, 12, 1 are usually my free time. AM. That's at the free time though. Seriously, no. Because you're living in a country where people don't really realize the importance of journalists. Ordinarily, people will call you, they will address you as the fourth estate of the realm. But all the other estates of the realm don't want you to succeed. They don't want you to be able to do that. Maybe if I'm living in another country, maybe if you're in a Western world, I may want to be a journalist again and again and again. Because there are things that you do, you derive joy from it. Particularly when you do human angle stories where you put smiles on the face of the people. Yes, you derive joy. But what is the sense of putting smiles on the face of the people when you are actually not smiling? One. Two. We have journalists that have never been paid by the organization. And you're also a journalist, though you get paid. But when you look at those people and you feel like, ah, this job, and they are not getting paid. What is the fate of those that will do it after us? One. Two you are not paid and journalists will be asked to go and write stories about people that have not been paid 
go and find out whether they are people are being paid by government are owing people salaries or not when you yourself cannot complain about the situation you are going in so for me i made up my mind that journalism is a profession that doesn't have second hand value so why should i want to do that again you are doing as a journalist most journalists in nigeria today still have side hustles because they know what they are earning is not enough as a take home pay so this is the time I want to be a journalist. And like I told you at the beginning, I had a fight between two lines, wanting to be a lawyer and a journalist. It is the worst that I've ever seen. And because policymakers, government, don't really want journalism to thrive because Nigeria today, it is what it is because of civil society organization and the media industry. The media industry fought for everything Nigeria is today, from the era of the military up to this present democracy. The improvement in our democracy is as a result of what the media has been able to do. So they said when you fight corruption, corruption fight back. So they also have a fight back with the media industry. Now. Oh, okay, let's leave them face their problems themselves. There are a whole lot of problems going around the media industry, which the policymakers don't really bother themselves about. Hence, journalists are thrown out there like orphan to fend for themselves. And that's why you see most journalists are also falling within the syndrome of Japa. Most of them run out of this country. The best of journalists are those who, right from their school days, have been involved in student unionism, um, radicalism and so when they get back to the society they don't want to leave it. they don't even bother that what they are having is not enough for them hence they decided to just go on with it but with what we are seeing now the quality that may be coming after some generation god help journalism in nigeria well, remuneration is nothing to come in fact it won't attract any young graduates to want to join your mind off money because money is not the in thing you make money but at the beginning you don't start with money start with knowing the nitty-gritty of the job when you get to know the nitty-gritty of the job then you can begin to sit down and feel like haven't done this then we need something else there is something very very important with journalism you get to know people you have connections Depending on how you know to utilize your connection, that is what eventually comes back to you at the end of the day. But if you don't sit tight to understand the basics from the beginning, then you hardly make the connection, come stuck of making something out of the connection. So my advice for them is sit tight, put your head on the table, learn from the best, forget money at the beginning, then you can always look for money later. Quality health care is essential, but in many instances, costly. Are you thinking of enjoying standard health care in a short state without being unnecessarily overstressed or overstretched financially? Our ship health insurance scheme is for you. To register, log on to www.oshia.com.